Okay. Yeah, you can hear me now. We're good to go. This is ease one. I mean, I'll just keep all the me talking to myself in there. I'll own up to my mistake. I'm not sure if I've talked everyone down. Um, you do, however, have a cursor in the middle of the screen, so if you just move your cursor from the middle of the screen, Mikey. Yep, I moved it down. Nope, it's still there. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Wait some seconds. Oh, okay. Of course, yes, 20 seconds behind. I'm an idiot. Ugh. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, um, what's the plot for this game, then? Um, so Give us a basic rundown. I was shipwrecked on this island. Okay. And no one knows how, because there's a big storm wall that's been keeping anybody from going in or out of this area. Um, apparently, I heard this land was cursed. Uh, yeah, they can't count any support from the outside. How are you surviving? Where are you getting the food from? Um, the, I think it's a fishing village. Ah, all right then. Okay, so this is the this is the only port. Wait, how can the fish get in and out of the island? Underwater. As in, like, there's a big wall it's, around it's farther it? So... Out, it's farther out to sea, I think. Okay. I'm just gonna say, I presume that would kill all of the fish. Yeah, probably. But yeah, it's a fishing village, so... They're good for themselves, but their uh, outside economy is kind of withering. Oh, I guess it's around the whole country. It's not just a small island. So, there's some fucked up shit. This is a very good game, Alucard. <clears throat> so, how long is it until you start actually getting into combat in this, then? Hopefully soon. Okay. Um, I'm kind of just speeding through text to get some necessary stuff out of the way. But I want to show the cutscene at the beginning and what the interface is like a little bit. So there's basically no nothing telling you what to do in this game. It, it, it guides you along pretty well, but it's not explicitly telling you. It doesn't. It doesn't give direct, um, right. direct instruction on how to play it properly. Right. You you can definitely figure it out by going back and talking to people. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But it's not gonna go out of its way. So it's it. so it's a so it's a Digimon World style of yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a game from the eighties nineties. Yeah, it has its flaws. Nothing to deal with that tutorialized. I think this is everyone in town, so I think I should be able to get a sword from this guy down here. Unless I'm forgetting something. Can't. Okay, so you can't talk to the cats. That's something. Might have missed someone, but if I did, then oh well. So, how is it you know we've spoken to everyone? As in, who gives you the thing? How is it you know when you've spoken to everyone um, in the village? Um, you just kind of have to pay attention. Yeah, he's... I did it right. See, I got a sword. An achievement. Now I can spend my extra money on... show you what combat looks like in, in the ease game. The bump system. So again, is it going to be based on tackling dudes? Yep. So you, you don't press any buttons, you just run into them. 
you want to run into him off center. And it took a little bit of practice. First, yeah, it does, there's no if it's off center, save, then yeah. I it, desperately need to save. Or I'm oh. gonna have to do all that again. Yeah, if it's you have to attack them slightly off center, then yeah, I can see how that might be slightly difficult when you've not played the game much. That's a battle right there. <laughs> so you, the battle system in this is stun lock guys against a wall until they die. Except for the boss battles, yeah. Um, I think it changes in some of the later entries in the series. Oh god, you almost died. Yes, I you know. don't have. You do not have a lot of health in this game. Not at the beginning, no. Oh fuck. So, if a guy has a sword on his right side, does that mean you cannot approach him from the right side? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Because that seems like a nuance of gameplay that I would involve or include in a game that I made. Remember though, this is an old game. Yeah, so it might be hard to implement something like that then. Yep. But health replenishes by just not moving, so it's not too bad. Ah. Oh, so that, that was not good. So Alcard in the chat says that the bump system is only used in in East 1 and 2. Okay, so what's combat like in, uh, like the new one, or E7? There's seven of these games? There's, like, nine of them. <laughs> wow. One of them just came out within the last few years for the Vita. Nice, considering that came out in the 80s, that's a hell of a lifespan the series has got. Yep. So, do you level up in this game? Is there an incentive see, to kill all... See the experience down at the bottom? Actually, I have a Steam win. Yeah, I see it now. Sorry, I had the Steam window for the review over the um, over the very bottom of the screen. Okay. Yeah, that's experience on my next level. And there's and there's no like quest track or anything, but there's little side quests and stuff you can go on to. So like, if I go into this bar here. And talk to this guy, I want to say. What's this guy? One of these guys. Yeah, so I think. So you have a drink with this guy, and I'm pretty sure that he got a ring stolen. Which of these three guys is it you're having a drink with? There's three guys, sir. The muscular guy. Oh, okay. The guy who's not the bartender or the one-eyed man. Okay, it's the one-eyed man who lost the ring. And if you go... I don't need to talk to everyone. If you go over to... Shop... This guy... This guy He has that ring. And you can get a return on your money. Okay, so the other games are like a fat more like a fast paced Zelda. So I'm happy to announce that I am twenty seven pence out of thirty nine pence. Uh, way of making it through breaking even on um, on make it indie. That's good. The problem is I'm not entirely sure who to talk to to continue because it's been a while since I okay fortune teller. It's been a while since I played. The beginning of this. I'm going to turn my volume up real quick. Because I want to hear the game music. Because this music is very good. 
Can you hear the music good, AP? I can hear it a bit, yeah. Okay. Um, it's very quiet, but I don't mind. Okay, so she has something for me to do. I think I got plenty of money now, so I need to go buy... I got a sword. No, I don't care, I don't care, I want to buy armor. So does a shield protect one side of your character, or is it just a basic stat boost? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's basic stat boost. Ah. Like if I were to remake this game today, I would actually add in the feature of sides. Well, I just because that would make I've been wanting more to sense. get seven, so we can... Or you mean this game, seven's a different... What's yeah, if I were to remake this exact game. Oh yeah. I think you could add a lot more tactical um, elements to the actual combat system if you did that. Is Alucard new to our streams? Um, I have no idea. Um, Alucard, have you ever been in our stream of us of ours before? Or, or just see ease and pop in. Yeah, I'll seek your books. And Alucard, if you are an expert on East One, um, if you've got any secret players tips of cool things you can pick up in the starting village or something like that, please let us know. It would be funny to see Mikey get something super overpowered at the beginning of the game. I mean, it sword. seems like the sort of thing an 80s game would do. Yeah, the sword's the only thing I knew about. Alucard's been to a few before. Okay. Yeah, I think actually Alucard's been in since... Uh, this is maybe Chroma. Okay. I, think I recognize you using it. Okay. So thanks for being a repeat viewer. Oh shit. Oh. Yeah, see, I just kind of demolished that guy. Yeah, you're just. You're mowing through guys. Sorry about that mouse cursor again. Crystal. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going anymore. Oh, there we go. Does the crystal give you directions on where you're supposed to go? It, show it, says it shows you the way inside the shrine, which I have not gone through myself. Ah. But it's not really doing much for you right now. Right, I just want to do it before I forgot. Yeah, this looks familiar. See, I can just run straight into these guys now. Basically. Yeah, you're destroying things. Uh, apparently the second game adds magic you can use. Mm -hmm. Which sounds like it could be an improvement. Why is this is how is this as deep as the combat system in this game gets? Um, I think bosses have mechanics. Ah, okay. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but it feels pretty good. The combat, the running into people. Yeah, especially for the 1980s. Yeah, it, it feels... like I've I've got to look at it through that mindset. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it feels pretty satisfying. To bump into someone and have them fly into 30 pieces. Let's see if I can't find where I'm supposed to go. On there. I'd like to show off at least one boss before we wrap up here. Zepic Village. Our card is saying that bosses get pretty, pretty complex. Okay, that's well, I'd be interested to see one.
Yeah, I'll keep between you. You should go tell everyone about this conversation as soon as you leave this conversation. Okay. Oh. Wait, no, no. I want to help. I want to help. Funny if he didn't, if he refused to talk to you again, if you refused to help him. That would be fucked up. Hmm. Like, I've, I've been concerned in The Witcher um, about accidentally saying no to people, uh, saying I don't have time for your quest, because it feels like the sort of game where he would do that. Yeah. Although so I've, I've never. I've also stopped saying no, I need time to prepare, because that's always useless to me, I find. Yeah, but you're playing on a uh, normal difficulty. You don't really need time to prepare in that game. No, but like, I'll put an oil on. Like, oh, we're definitely gonna be fighting the necrophages here. No, it's race everywhere. Oh. Well, there's a place in uh, Novigrad. Um, well, in Novigrad, I find myself having to use it more often because, like, guys will be standing in the middle of mission paths, and as soon as you walk into them, you don't have to trigger the conversation, it triggers itself. So, um, I find myself using it there, so I don't accidentally start two quests at once and watch a guy walk into his death. I have seen that happen. I was like, what? Why, why would you have that as a feature in the game? Mm -hmm. yeah, I played... Like, I suddenly had two health bars on screen, and one of them just got killed by bandits from one of the quests. Yeah, I've lost a lot of hours of that game. Wait, did you, did mm. you tell me where to go? Because I wasn't able to talk about <laughs> Alucard, if I start wandering around aimlessly, please tell me if you remember where I need to go. I have 31 hours in The Witcher. God. I think I have like 20. It's so good though. Oh, okay. Here you go. Here somewhere. I'm just wrecking guys. Yeah, you are. So you're not supposed to have a weapon at this point in the game? Like, yeah, you um, you've got the sword of... You can get that, that's... I mean, you get to it by talking to everyone and talking to that one guy. But I, mm. I mean, like, is it much better than weapons you can usually get at this point? No. It's it's the first weapon you can get. You just get it for free instead of having to grind down money. Jobson, I haven't actually had the Witcher crash on me yet. I've had no bugs with it. At all. I've had a really smooth experience. I've had a ton of bugs. Yeah, I've, I've, you've mentioned that every time you quit the game, it will refuse to actually quit properly. I, I've bugged out of the game more than times than I've actually quit. Okay, but, uh, I found a dungeon. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've, I've had a really smooth experience with The Witcher 3, and I'm kind of surprised, considering the, the time that most other people seem to have had with it. You got a ruby. Yeah, I was. I got into one of the random cutscenes that plays when you're just talking around, walking around Novigrad today, and just froze, and the audio was still going, and then it crashed out. In fact, I've had one bug total in The Witcher 3, and that was when I was talking to. Have you seen Kira Matt before? In fact, if you're in Novigrad, then yeah, you've seen Kira Matt. I've, I've, um, finished, I've finished her quest line. Right, I've had two bugs. Um, one where Kira met, her forehead was a see-through. I think this might be a boss. Yeah, this looks like a boss. So let's see how, how the mechanics work here. I don't know, but it's kind of overwhelming. It seems, yeah, it seems like there's not much of a chance to attack him. And my health isn't regenerating either. Oh, you're doomed. I think I'm boned here. He isn't really attacking you. That's what it looks like when you die. Well, it was a while since you are saved. Uh, yeah, it is. So there's an important <laughs> lesson on saving early, saving often. At least in really old games. But, um... But I know what to do, so I can just probably speed through. <clears throat> Yeah, There's no I should have really told you to, um, to save. To save, yeah. Get 
But yeah, um, Jobson saying that he's had a floating sideways disembodied head behind Geralt's shoulder when he was talking to some lady in a bar once. I've had Kira met in one cutscene, her, her forehead was entirely see-through. Um, in another cutscene, in the middle of Novograd, Triss was just constantly on fire, like the entire cutscene, in the middle of the street. Which, when you know the situation that is going on in Novograd with Triss, it kind of looks pretty fucking stupid. And then there was another cutscene where a bear, bear was walking about between um, between Geralt and the person I was talking to. Just a wild bear chilling out. It was pretty good. I thought it was funny. The uh, daughter that you have to find for the Bloody Baron a bunch of times, her hair wouldn't load in. Oh yeah, I've seen people where the hair pops in at, uh, shortly after the conversation of one person whose hair didn't appear for a um, while. I got stuck once in between two cliff faces and it looked like Geralt was just uh, skating in a sweet half pipe. I think those are the only fun bugs I've had. Wait, since you've done the entire Kira Max line, um, how did you end it then? What do you mean? Um, how did you end the quest with Kira Max? Um, do you mean you did the side quests with her, or yeah, just the? Um... I did all. I. She is not no longer seeable in my game. Ah. So which part do you the... mean? There's a lot of choices you can make with her. The very end. I sent her to. Uh, Witcherland. Ah, same here. Uh, did you get her to keep the, um, did you let her keep the notes? Yes, I did. I took the notes off of her. I'm yeah. gonna see if I can solve someone. What happens if you, you can, you just get an item? No idea. You just get the notes in your inventory and get to read them. I'm oh. hoping that someone, something will come up where I can sell them to someone. Because that seems like the sort of thing this game would do. Yeah. So I'm gonna sell the plague notes. On someone. Now, what did you do? What did you do with the ghost? Um, I attacked it first of all. Okay. Um, went outside, and then I had to go get Graham from the um the fishing village. I had to take him over. I had to um then make Graham talk to the ghost. He kisses her. He's and he kisses the ghost with its massive disappearing jaw, and then he dies. Okay, so you took the ghost to him. That's also what I did. Hmm. And then, have you read the notes on that quest about the girl? Um, I think I have. About how her ghost has gone out into the world to spread disease? <laughs> um, no, I haven't read those notes, sir. I think you did a different thing to me. As in, I took him to the ghost, and the ghost is gone now. Oh, no, I took her bones to him. Oh. And then, oh, you fucked up. You done fucked up, so. Yeah, and then he said, thanks for bringing me the bones. And then I left the house, and I heard him scream. And I went back <laughs> and he was dead. Well, he's dead in my game, too. So it doesn't matter much. The only difference is that you've got a horrible plague monster. Yeah. But, um, it's not as bad as my ending for the Bloody Baron Path. Did... What did you do with the Bloody Baron Path? Um... In what respect? As um, in the absolute end of the path. What uh, happened with him in yours? Uh, he killed himself. Yeah, same with me. R.I.P. I, I let the tree out. Yeah, same. I, I was like... I was... Super shocked that we actually had a really visible suicide in a game. Because that was dark as shit. Because those those crones are kind of gross. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, God. that tree was hella evil right from the get-go jobs, and but um, the crones were even worse than the tree. They were they were obviously sacrificing children, so um, yeah, the, so no, the, not the happening. Tree didn't, the tree wasn't didn't seem super evil, just mostly evil. <laughs> Those, <the crones laughs> just not evil quite trustable. The crones were yeah. evil as shit from before you met them. Hmm. Like, if you'd seen the Greca cutscene um, with Siri, then you knew immediately not to trust the crones, because what you can tell from that is that Greca had been sent to the crones to be sacrificed by her dad. And I was like, no, Greca's... I like Greca. She's sweet. I, I couldn't have that happen. Yeah. Crones gonna die. I didn't get to kill the crones, though. I'm quite disappointed you don't get to fight them. Now, I'm really hoping that I get to dismantle that entire Church of the Eternal Flame. Or at least kill the prominent members of it. Because I'm not a fan of them. I don't blame for not being a fan of the Church of the Eternal Flame. I'm having to resist talking now because I'm like a few hours ahead of you so I know what happens down that path. Do, do I get... Do I get to murder them? You may or may not get to murder them. Save the game. But, um, yeah. You may or may not get to murder them. I actually don't know. I mean, like, I do know, but I'm going to say I don't know. I'm going to continually spread misinformation just so I don't tell you exactly what happens. That's not fair. There will be things that you do with the Church of the Eternal Flame. Okay. okay. And what the Church of the Eternal Flame did to a certain significant character in my room was funny as fuck to me, because that is a character I do not give a shit about. Oh. Okay. So. This may take a while. Yeah. I'm Are you sure you're supposed to come here? Yeah, I'm, I think I need to grind for a while. Or find something else to do. Yeah, I, f I don't think that's for you to do right now. Maybe try and go find those band bandits in the mountain? Yeah, I'll go try and find the bandits. It seems like I need to be doing a lot more damage, that thing. Maybe once I get level 3 or 4. Or we hit point where this isn't even slightly interesting to watch. Yeah, I'm going to say that the uh, t Temple the Eternal fl uh, Flame, um, I was slightly disappointed with the ending of it, just because I would have liked to see it go on for a bit longer. Maybe I made a decision that ended it all really quickly, but um, I would have liked to see um, a bit more longevity with it all. The resolution. Um, mm -hmm kind of cuts those possibilities off. I'll kind of just say that you probably need to be about level 4 to 5. Level 4 to 5? No, 4 to 5. Oh. I'm like, I don't think it goes that high, does it? I've, again, I've been doing I've been doing a lot of side quests. And he says maybe save up for a long sword. And this looks like the bandit you're after. Yeah, let's, let's save here. You mean the chest is empty? This guy looks way too nice to be a thief. He does. He looks like an old grandpa. I want to be friends with him. Uh, but oh, they're they're thieves with hearts of gold, apparently. <laughs> then, then where is it? There's honor among these thieves. They're Robin Hoods. One second. Let me stand up real quick. Jobs insane. Is this the game where you have to check chests twice because sometimes hidden stuff in empty chests? So maybe go and interact with that chest again after you do this. 